This is Touched by Heaven. Everyday encounters with God, those moments when heaven and earth collide and we see God, we see his hand reaching out to us, uh, attempting to get our attention, inviting us into a closer relationship. Here we share stories of encounter with angels, divine intervention, prophetic dreams, visions, near-death experiences, big and little God incidents. I'm your host, Trapper Jack. Welcome to episode 79 of Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God. You know quite a bit about Fatima? I thought I did. I thought I knew just about everything about Fatima. Sure. You say the word, oh, the third secret. They never said what the third secret was. Or wasn't it a miracle of the sun? Something was going on? Yeah. Or uh, something about, uh, oh, Russia, uh, consecrating Russia. What, what was all that? So... We all, we all know something about Fatima, right? And if not, well, between May 13th and October 13th of 1917, the Blessed Mother Mary appeared to three shepherd children in Fatima, Portugal. The May 13th first appearance was eight days after Pope Benedict XV had done something. He was trying to play peacemaker during World War I, trying to get all the factions together. Nobody trusted the Pope, so he got nowhere. But he did put out a plea for everyone to pray for the Blessed Virgin Mary to intercede in the war, that Mary could end this war. Pray to Mary. Eight days later, Mary makes her first appearance at Fatima. I thought I knew it all, and then I heard this story. of the, It's like a James Bond plot of this undercover work by a bishop in the Kremlin to bring down communism, and Mother Teresa's involved. I go, what is that? So that, that's part of the story today as well. But I think Fatima is kind of a tip of the iceberg story. We, yeah, we know a little bit, but like icebergs, 9% above the waterline and 91% below, and there was just so much that happened during those six months. We talk about what God is saying in, in these encounters, and God was saying a lot in those six months. It was a run-on sentence for six months with uh, Mary at the, at the center of it all, and these three children, aged 10, 9, and 7, uh, shepherd children, because God does love his shepherds, and he was saying a lot through these kids, so... We will uh, start with the tip of the iceberg and then pull the camera back and just look at everything that was being said during that time back in 1917. I found this uh, YouTube video I'm going to use as kind of a backdrop for my sound effects, and I'll put a little narration over it as we go to that moment of the miracle of the sun here on Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God. October 13th, 1917, Fatima, Portugal. It's raining. It's been raining all day, and it's cold. But still they come by the thousands. People coming by train, cart, car, walking. 70,000 plus in Fatima, Portugal, and they're all headed to one spot, a, a hill where these children, Lucia, aged 10, Francisco is 9, Jacinta is seven years old, and they've been seeing things. For the last six months, uh, a woman, a woman who says she's from heaven, hasn't identified herself, not yet. She says she will today. But she's been appearing to them and telling them things, and she said there would be a miracle today, so people come. But the parents of the kids, now they're worried. What if there's no miracle? What if these kids are in danger? We will each be judged for our actions this day. You should not have let the children go. Lambs amongst wolves. But the children are there, and they're down on their knees in the mud, waiting for this woman from heaven. That's all she said, she's from heaven. Is she coming? What if she doesn't come? She's there. What if she won't come anymore? She promised. Show us the sign! Show us the sign! As you can imagine, people getting irritable. It's been raining all day. It's cold. And they're waiting for a miracle, and all they're getting is a muddy field, and they're, they're getting muddy. They're getting caked in mud and wet and... And they keep waiting, 70,000 plus waiting, along with the kids. Whoever wants to go can go, but I'm not. Our lady told us to come. She'll be here soon. And they waited. And they waited. And then, 
then the rain finally stopped. And the clouds parted. And you could see the sun. It stopped raining. And Mary did come, in blue and white. Identifying herself for the first time as Our Lady of the Rosary. What do you want from me? Of all the things said to us that day, what impressed me most deeply was her tender sorrow. She said that we must turn to God, for he is already so much offended. She spoke so gently, but with so much pain. I wanted to spread her words throughout the whole world. Six months before, at her very first appearance, when she identified herself only that she was from heaven, they asked, are we going to heaven? Can we go to heaven with you? We want to go to heaven. Will she take us to see heaven? I want so much to see heaven. She told me that she would take Francisco and Jacinta to heaven very soon. But I would have to stay. Am I to stay here alone? She told me not to be afraid. For she would be with me, always. And indeed, Jacinta and Francisco were in heaven within we two years. Here. Within we just two years here. because of illness. Jacinta was exhumed in 1951 and found to be incorrupt. Looked just like the day she was buried in 1920. Lucia lived in 97 as a nun. of the rosary. You promise a miracle. We will show them a sign so that people will believe. And she did. Light came out of her hands. She directed that light upwards to the sun. And then Lucia pointed at the sun and said, look, look at the sun. sun began to spin, change colors, shoot streams of light out in all directions. And many said they could see the sun tremble. People got down on their knees, began to pray, their hands upstretched to the heavens. You could hear the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And then they looked up, and they began to watch as the sun danced. Was this mass hysteria? Is this everybody just in mass hysteria? No. Because that can't explain how people 20, 30 miles away were seeing the very same thing. A gentleman on a boat, miles and miles away from this, looking up and seeing the same thing and writing home about it. More documentation. As the sun danced about the sky. Newspapers were there, including atheist newspapers, and they reported accurately what was going on. They just said God had nothing to do with it. And they all watched as the sun danced, putting on a show for a good 10 to 12 minutes. One newspaper account mentioned a man who looked around to all the people and he started shouting at the men, take off your hats, take off your hats. God is here. A 
imagine. Put yourself there watching this. And then everyone thought the same thing at the same time. The world is coming to an end as the sun began to plummet towards the earth. and into place. <laughs> Can you imagine being there? <gasps> and then they looked around and the ground was all dry and their clothes were clean and dry. And they realized they had just stared at the sun for 10, 12 minutes with absolutely no harm. How can this be? What a sign. October 13th, 1917, Fatima, Portugal. Miracles get our attention. Really? They invite us into a closer relationship. Isn't that what I hear Trapper saying? Why, yes, it is. Here's this huge miracle. They all thought they were going to die. I mean, the sun is getting big. and It's like ah, they're screaming and yelling. The world's about to come to an end and it goes back into place. Whew. Okay, I got to get to the store. Uh, you know, like, wow, where is the world? Giant exclamation mark. So because and you, you would think everyone would go, oh, OK, now what had been set up to now? Because uh, that seemed to be a, a message from God. Well, Mary had said in July there will be a miracle on October 13th. Was there? Yeah. That Jacinta and Francisco would be in heaven soon. Were they? Yeah. Within two years. What else? Uh, this war, World War I, will be over soon. Was it? Yeah. But there will be a bigger war unless people stop offending God, turning away from their sins and towards God. And he gave him 20 years. You know, God is, uh, he is merciful. He is rich in mercy. He is slow to anger, but it's like, give you 20 years. Hmm. You can't have a discussion about Fatima without talking about the third secret. Was it actually released? It looks like we got at least a partial, not all of it, um, the part about the uh, persecution within the church, there's something there that it appears wasn't released. Back in the 1940s, Lucia was interviewed and she, she mentioned something about, she said that you're gonna have to order me to write down what Mary said because I don't want to. <laughs> I mean, she says it makes me quake uh, of things that are to come. And what we heard in 2000 as being, and we, we heard some of uh, Lucia's words, but we didn't hear Mary's words. And that's what was lacking. Up to now, it's always been these, you get these quotes from Mary of what's going to happen or what should be done. And there are no Mary quotes in that third secret. So something's missing there. But you get a pretty good idea what might be in there. If you go back, you want to do some Googling about Mary and some of other appearances. There's an amazing one from the early 1600s from Our Lady of Good Success. There's a name for you. Our Lady of Good Success, she appeared in Ecuador. But she spoke about things to come in the latter 20th century and nails it. Nails the culture, nails some of the activity that was going on with some of the priests, nails nails a lot of stuff. That's worth looking into. Um, Akita, Japan, some people pronounce it Akita, Japan. 1973, Mary appearing to a, a Sister Agnes. Some good things in there, too. Give you little little hints of what might be in the Fatima message uh, when she talks about That's the one that Mary said. There will be bishop against bishop. Once again, this internal, 
these internal issues within the church that were to come, are to come, are in, are in action right now. But those two might give you an idea of the tone of uh, the third Fatima secret that may not have yet been released. Another sign, Lucia was told, uh, if, the, if, if things don't change, there'll be a sign, there'll be another sign that the World War II is about to begin, uh, an unknown light, an unknown light. January 25th, 1938, is kind of like the northern lights on steroids. They lasted five hours, brighter. Th- in fact, the, the newspaper reports say nothing like these northern lights had happened in over 200 years. London thought half the city was on fire. That's how the sky was lit up with reds and oranges and yellows. They thought the city was on fire over North America, over all of Europe. Bermuda saw it. I, there was one account I saw that Australia saw it, which makes sense if this other story is true that I read, that most northern lights... The lights go up about 180 miles or so, so you can see them, you know, quite a ways away. But these lights were up about 420 miles. You know where the space station is right now? 200 miles up. This was 420 miles up. No wonder the world saw these lights, this unknown light. Lucia, Lucia saw saw these uh, lights, notified the bishop, it's coming. Sure enough, within just days, Hitler took over the military in Germany, and within weeks, he was in Austria annexing that country, and game on. Uh, so many things. I mean, just one after another after another, these prophecies coming true. But what gives you comfort in the story of Mary and Fatima is that she said, in the end, my immaculate heart will triumph. Her immaculate heart. Lucia was also told by Mary that one of the reasons why Lucia was to remain on earth was to help her son. Because Jesus wanted her to help develop a devotion to Mary's immaculate heart. And that immaculate heart should be right there with Jesus' sacred heart. If if you have a miraculous medal, you'll see on the back, there's the immaculate heart of Mary and the sacred heart of Jesus side by side. And that's the way Jesus wanted it to be, together, their hearts together, okay. So there needed to be this new devotion to the immaculate heart of Mary. In fact, in 1930, Jesus appeared to Lucia And the subject of Mary's Immaculate Heart came up and he says, there needs to be this devotion to Mary's Immaculate Heart because in reparation for all the sins against Mary, what sins against Mary? Jesus was not happy. Uh, He was not happy with the blasphemes against his mother. What blasphemes? He says there were five. People were doing five things, if you will. The blasphemes against Mary her immaculate conception, the blaspheme against her being the mother of God and the mother of all of us, our our heavenly mom, the blasphemes against her perpetual virginity, the blasphemes that keep children away from Mary and how some scorn the sacred images of his mother. He was not a happy guy. So this, this devotion to the immaculate heart of Mary was in reparation for the sins against his mother. So, which takes us back again to Fatima when Mary said, Russia needs to be consecrated to my immaculate heart. And the children are looking at her like Russia. They didn't know it was a country. They thought it was a girl. Who's Russia, right? But it was because Mary said Russia was going to be spreading its errors and causing a lot of trouble in the world and a lot of persecution to the church. And that is why she brought up Russia. She was saying this between May and October of 1917. You know what happened also on October 13th, 1917? On on October 13th, Vladimir Lenin was coming into Moscow to put the plan into action for a revolution for communism to take over. Also, on that very same day, revolutionaries were going into a cathedral, Kazan Cathedral, huge cathedral, and they were sacking it. They were destroying as much as they could. Atheism, communism, game on, game on. And a month later, Russia would be a communist nation after the revolution. Again, the prophecy of Mary. This was going to be such a sign. What Jesus wanted everyone to see is that if people did what Mary was saying to do, you would see Russia converted like that. It would just happen like that. That it would be such a sign about about her immaculate heart to go right along with his sacred heart. This would be such a sign. But, but did people follow? Eh, you know. So in 1929, 
when Mary appeared to Lucia and said, okay, it's time for the Pope and all the bishops to gather some kind of ceremony and consecrate Russia. Give me Russia, basically, and I'll get rid of this communism thing. And the church didn't do it. A head shaker, a head shaker. I mean, the Pope had a, had a ceremony, had a mass, but he didn't bring all the bishops in. Not in the 40s, not in the 50s. And so we had to go all the way to the 1980s before John Paul II, after being shot on May 13th of 1981, and that bullet somehow went around an artery that he, he had a special devotion then to Our Lady of Fatima. And he wanted to see if he could do something about consecrating Russia, now the Soviet Union, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary to get rid of communism, right? And, and convert this, uh, this nation back to Christianity. It was the idea. So that kind of takes us up to this point where I'm, I gave a talk recently and I kind of got into this James Bond story. It's not a James Bond story, but... It's just so, it's just, I just never had never heard it before. So uh, we're going to go to the talk and talk about how this undercover work was being done to get rid of communism and to finally, once and for all, maybe, maybe consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Pope John Paul II, he wants to do this. He puts together 15 paragraphs of text to consecrate the world, including Russia, Soviet Union, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. He's sending it out to all the bishops in the world so that everybody on the Annunciation anniversary, March 25th, 1984, everybody everywhere, a bishop is reading this text and offering Russia, the world, including Russia, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But here's the part of the story I don't think you've heard before. This was stunning to me. Mother Teresa of Calcutta also had this thing about this consecrating Russia to the Immaculate Heart. She wanted to be in on this, and they have a mutual friend, a bishop, a bishop by the name of Pavol Hinalika. Here's what she says to the bishop. She says, you are gonna celebrate Mass secretly inside the Kremlin. Yeah, the heart of the Soviet Union. You're going to be inside the Kremlin. There are cathedrals in there, and you're going to celebrate Mass. And he's going, how long do you want me to be in the gulag? <laughs> she gives him a bag of mir miraculous medals, and he does it. He gets into Moscow, and he keeps getting by the guards. It's like God is with him. God is just with him. Mary is just with him. He gets to baggage claim, and, and the, the guy's going through his bags, and he's going, what's with these medals? Uh, souvenirs from Rome. <laughs> want some? Yeah. So he takes some. Next day, he goes totally incognito. He's just, he's just a tourist in, in Russia, right? He's just a tourist in Moscow. He goes over to the Kremlin. He's just a tourist. There are three cathedrals inside that are now museums. So he comes inside, and there's a guard there. And the guard says, okay, you can go, but the bag stays here. He's got everything in there. He's got everything in there. So he starts doing the small talk. And, and how's your family? And blah, blah, blah. He kind of talks to him for a while. And he says, I really need my bag. I got some personal items in there. Okay, exception. Go ahead. So when he goes in with his bag, he goes to the first church, Michael the Archangel Cathedral. He goes up to the altar. Like I say, at the museum, you got tourists all around, right? He goes up to the altar. He pulls out Pravda, the newspaper. Pravda, by the way, means truth. And inside, tucked inside, he's got, he's got the text. And he reads it slowly, he prays it slowly consecrating Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Puts it back in. Goes over to another church. He goes over to Church of the Annunciation. Goes up to the altar. Tourists around, right? Again, pulls it out. Does it again. He looks around. If there was mass being celebrated in there, the chair where the patriarch, where the Russian patriarch, their bishop, if you will, where he would sit, he goes over to that chair and he puts a miraculous medal at the chair. Then he kind of goes around like a tourist. He's taking pictures, you know, just doing touristy things. And then sits down and begins to quietly, quickly celebrate Mass. He's got a little aspirin bottle with some wine in it. He's got a nylon bag with host in it. And he celebrates Mass. Very short homily that day. <laughs> he's sweating bullets. He's sweating bullets. And he's going, he celebrates the Mass. Then he, he, he's not done yet. He leaves. He walks across the square. Lenin's tomb. He stands in front of Lenin's tomb. There's a guard this close to him. And he pulls out Pravda. He pulls out. He reads it there too. He shoots across the plaza again. He looks up. Up on a building, there's a sign that says, Communism will triumph. You know what went through my mind? Fatima, when Mary said, after all is said and done, my immaculate heart will triumph. 
That's what went through my mind. He gets on a plane, comes back home. Did it work? Did it work? Did it work? John Paul II contacts Lucia. Here's what we did. Did it work? She says, I'll pray. I'll find out. We understand that she sent back a note saying, Mary says, yes, done. She will be faithful. Just watch. This is 1984. In 1988, Mother Teresa gets the okay from Mikhail Gorbachev's wife to put convents in Russia. 20 of them. Whoa, that's a change. And then in 1991, on Christmas Day, Christmas Day, 1991, for the last time, the Sicklenhammer flag of the Soviet Union came down. Wow. How's that for Mary? Wow. Would you call that a complete conversion of Russia? No, no. A heck of a good start, though. After all that time, after all those decades, finally things began happening quickly. But as far as it being this 100% Christian nation now, no, you can't say that. But like I say, it's a partial. Sidebar. 1938, Portugal. Just before the war starts. Just before the war starts, all the bishops got together and they consecrated Portugal to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. They did these processions to Fatima. And I think they said something like 10%, 15% of all the population went on these processions to Fatima to consecrate Portugal, to give Portugal to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Europe was devastated during World War II. Guess the one place where not a bomb fell, where there was no war, Portugal. In 1940, Lucia announced, she said, Portugal's safe. Mary has told me that she will protect Portugal throughout the war, and if other nations had done the same thing, they would have been protected too. You don't have to be a country to consecrate yourself to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Any of you done the 33 days to morning glory? Powerful. My wife Elizabeth did it. She came home and she told me what it was because I, I wasn't aware. She starts talking about, you know, you, you, just, you just send all your, you just, you go straight to Mary on everything, on everything. Anyway, I, I looked at it and I just, I just bought it immediately. I just, I just went, this is, this is great. I understand this. I just totally understand this. This is, this is great. I get it. I was all in. You know who else has done this? Saint John Paul II, Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta, Saint Padre Pio, Saint Maximilian Kolbe. Pick a saint. They, I never understood this. You read about the saints and this, this devotion they had to Mary. I never got it. I just didn't get it. And then you see, here's, here's the concept. Here's the concept. I can go to Jesus. I can go directly to Jesus with my prayers, right? I can go straight to him. Here are my prayers. Wonderful. Jesus is happy, right? Except I'm defective. I know I look like a saint, but I'm defective. Actually, I've been posing for my saint picture. What do you think? <laughs> kind of wispy, kind of ethereal? Yeah. Or I can go to Mary with my prayers. Why? Because she's going to take my prayers and she's taking all the defects out. Anything that comes from Mary is going to be perfect because Mary is perfect and she's going to take my perfect prayer wrapped around her prayers and other people's prayers and give them to Jesus. I'm telling you, this year, I have never had more yeses from God in my entire life. It's life-changing. And Jesus keeps hitting us over the head with it, trying to show us. He's trying to show us. How? Was it Jesus who appeared at Lourdes or in Magigoria or in Fatima or in Mexico City or Lady of Guadalupe? No, he sends his mom. Millions of people go to, to, to the Guadalupe Shrine every year to go to Jesus through Mary. Fatima, to Jesus through Mary. Lourdes, to Jesus through Mary. Millions of people are going to Jesus through Mary. And that's, that's, that's the concept for us. He came to us through Mary, we go back to him through Mary. You can keep praying to Jesus direct. He's not gonna get mad at you. I'm just telling you, if you do it through Mary, you're gonna feel somebody hit the accelerator on your <laughs> body automobile. You're going to feel something. You're going to feel experiences you've never felt before. It's, I, I can't explain it. It just happens. It's like you, you want to walk to church or do you want Mary to pick you up and take you there? That's what it feels like. Bam, you just get there. You just get there. You can go online. You can find a paragraph that says, I consecrate myself to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. You can do the 33 days, whatever it is. I'm just telling you my experience has been absolutely extraordinary. And Mary showing us, come to me. 
I'm going to get you to Jesus. I, nobody knows Jesus. And besides, like Maximilian Colby said, you can't out-love Jesus for his love for Mary. You can't. It's impossible. We don't worship her. We don't worship her. She's not God. But she's perfect. Amen, brother. Yeah, what he said. You bet. All I know is it works. I, all I know is uh, when you look at it and take a step back again is that uh, did Jesus appear at Fatima? Did Jesus appear at Lourdes? Did Jesus appear at Mexico City to Juan Diego? Is it his image where we see Our Lady of Guadalupe? Why does he keep sending his mom? Is he trying to tell us something? Some, something. Is he trying to tell us something? Yeah. To Jesus through Mary. That's what he's saying. It sounds counterintuitive. I know. It sounds counterintuitive. All it does is work. Can't explain it? Can't explain it. All I can tell you is it works. To Jesus through Mary. Um, the takeaway today, the takeaway in today's episode, I would say, is a quote from Mary from the Bible. And that is, do whatever he tells you. That's it. Do whatever he tells you. And the other takeaway would be, remember, she came to Fatima, Mary did, as Our Lady of the Rosary. And she told the children, pray the rosary every day. At all her appearances, she always says that, pray the rosary every day. For 800 years now, when she appears, she's made the point that that is your greatest spiritual weapon. Uh, hey, if you want to hear more great stories like these global conversations God is, has been having with us, uh, check out the uh, CD. The download is available at TrapperJackSpeaks.com. The talk is called, Did You Hear What God Just Said? And it's these kind of moments where God was, he's, he was screaming with run-on sentences many, many times uh, since the Bible was put together. Did you hear what God just said? Just go to this website, TrapperJackSpeaks.com. TrapperJackSpeaks.com and you can download the CD there. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sharing these episodes of Touched by Heaven, Everyday Encounters with God. I will see you next week. I'm Trapper Jack.